I go to museums all the time, just makes my blood boil, seeing all these beautiful, incredible museums, fancy displays, loads of money, and the wrong message. Kids are being brainwashed. That's why we started our own. We need lots of creation museums around the country, hundreds of them. You folks need one up here. Somebody start one. Next verse says, He lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fens. The word fens means the swamp. Well, the biggest swamp in the world is in the middle of Africa. Right there. Most Americans don't know how big Africa is. There's what America looks like next to the Africa. That swamp is gigantic. Bigger than the whole state of... Same size as the whole state of Illinois. Gigantic swamp. There have been reports of dinosaurs in that swamp in the last 200 years. There could be a few dinosaurs still alive. I don't think there's very many. I don't think they're very big ones. But I think there's some still alive, folks. We cover lots more on that in the next session. But basically, God made dinosaurs with Adam and Eve. They were big lizards before the flood. Noah took them on the ark. People began killing them. There are very, very few left today, but there might be a few still around. But don't let anybody tell you they lived millions of years ago. That is just plain baloney. We'll cover dinosaurs still alive in the next session after the break. Thank you. All right, in this session, we're going to talk about dinosaurs that may still be alive. Now, I know how crazy that sounds to the average person who's been trained with the humanist line of, you know, dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. But some of these guys need to open their mind just a little bit. Maybe somebody can drop an intelligent thought in there. I think from a Christian perspective, the world is very different than what our textbooks teach. I think dinosaurs always lived with people. They called them dragons. There could be some still alive. The Bible teaches before the flood came, there was a canopy of water overhead and water under the crust of the earth. Probably gave optimum conditions for people and animals to live a long time. Actually, they would have lived forever if they hadn't sinned. Dinosaurs were big lizards that lived with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They did not live millions of years ago. They were pre-flood. Many indications from history indicate that people have always known about dinosaurs. And yet the textbooks are saying dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Somebody is clearly wrong. And I think I know who it is and I enjoy showing them who they are. Dr. Seuss even says millions of years ago before you were born. Millions of years ago. We've just been bombarded with this propaganda for so long, some people actually believe it. Millions of years ago. The Bible says behemoth lives under the shady trees in the fens. The old English word fens means the swamp. Behemoth lives in the swamp. Well, the largest swamp in the world is in Central Africa, right on the equator, called the Likwala Swamp. 55,000 square miles. It is 80% unexplored. That swamp is bigger than any one of those yellow states. It's the same size as any of the three red states. That's a big swamp. Belgium took over this area back in 1885. They colonized the Congo. And it was called the Belgian Congo for many, many years. Then in 1960, the communists went in there and liberated them. <clears throat> you know how the communists liberate countries, don't you? They killed everybody and said, okay, you're free now. Well, <laughs> well today it's called the People's Republic of Congo. But back in the 1700s, even before Belgians went in there, some missionaries went into that swamp and reported there are dinosaurs still alive. In 1910, an article came out in the New York newspaper after folks had gone into the swamp and they said, folks, there are dinosaurs still alive in that swamp. This article appeared in the Saturday Evening Post, 1948. There could be dinosaurs still alive. A game hunter, big game hunter, went in there his name was uh, Mr. Gobbler. He returned from a trip to Angola and announced to the newspaper that there was an animal of large dimensions, the description of which could only fit a dinosaur. The natives in the region called it Chippeque. That was their name for it. Could there be dinosaurs living in the last century? In 1980, a couple of scientists went in there to the Congo swamp. They said it's the most miserable swamp in the world. They said the mosquitoes landed on them at the rate of about 1,000 per hour. Just like dust, swarms of mosquitoes swarming around them. Constant battle with mosquitoes, poisonous snakes, poisonous spiders, every kind of critter you can imagine. Plus the pygmies over there are taught, if you ever see a white man, he's probably a spy. The communists go in there and tell them that to keep you know, everybody else out of the Congo. Well, Roy Mackle from the University of Chicago and a couple other guys went into that swamp, tromped around for a while. The natives kept talking about a couple of animals. One that was interested them was the animal called Mahamba. When they showed them a picture of a crocodile, they said, yep, that's Mahamba, right there. 
And these scientists said, well, how big does Mahamba get? And they paced it off on the sandbar, 50 feet. Said, right. Of course, now if you're a pygmy, four foot four, a 50 foot crocodile looks real big to you. But they claim there are 50 foot crocodiles in the swamp. I don't know. That's what the natives said, and they live there. They also talked about an animal called Mokele Mbembi. Mokele Mbembi. When Dr. Mackle said, fellas, what is Mokele Mbembi? They draw a sketch on the ground of an apatosaurus or a cetosaurus, one like this right here. Dr. Mackle said, fellas, that's a dinosaur. They've been dead for 70 million years. And the natives said, we're sorry, we didn't know about that. We've never been to America to study evolution. All we know is we see them out in the swamp once in a while when we're fishing. Now, they're not very big, okay? They're about 20 feet nose to tail is what the natives will tell you. Most of the body is about the size of hippopotamus, just a long neck and a long tail. They live underwater. They're very rarely seen. They apparently are nocturnal, active at night. And so the chances of seeing one are close to zero. You could even live there for your whole lifetime and never see one. It's not like they're real common, okay? There are just a few left in this big swamp. I live in Florida. I've been there 15 years. You know there are panthers in Florida? I've only seen one in 15 years and it was dead on the highway. It's possible for a lot of animals to avoid detection. Anybody knows that that studies animals at all. Well, Dr. Mackle went there and the natives said, oh yeah, Mokele and Bembe's favorite food is uh, malombo plant. If you find some of these plants along the side of the river and you find there are no alligators or hippos, probably um, Mokele and Bembe lives there. Because he's so ferocious, even the hippos and alligators are afraid of him. The crocodiles, they drive them out of the, their part of the river. They found footprints of one of the animals. Dr. Mackle's phone number here, and he's got a California and a Chicago house. There he is. He said, look, I've been there. That's what the natives say. Missionary uh, Eugene Thomas was there for 42 years. He's retired now back in Ohio. There's his phone number. He said, yeah, I had met pygmies that knew about these creatures. He said, they live in the swamp. He said he met two pygmies that killed one and ate it back in 1959. There are just so many stories about Mokele and Bembi from that swamp region over there. Different countries around that region have different languages, of course, and they call it by different names, but they all describe this creature right here. Marcelina Agnagna saw one. He's a biologist from the Congo. He said it looked like that. Mark, uh, Dr. Mark Miller went there, came back. He said, boy, the pygmies over there just nearly killed us. They got us, captured us. They thought, we thought they were going to kill us. Fascinating story from World Explorer magazine, Wex Club. Com, w e x for World Explorer Club dot com. They're right down here in Chicago. Yeah, is where their headquarters are near Chicago. Some guys from Los Angeles went to the swamp and said, "Look, we saw one, but our cameras malfunctioned because of the high humidity. It ruined everything. It's not like you just drive in, take a picture, and drive home. Okay, it's just not the same. Right? It's a little tough conditions over there. They said the creature was uh, brownish in color. The skin appeared slick and smooth. It had long neck and a small head." Herman saw it, Kia saw it, that's his wife, and on several occasions they heard it making a tremendous roar. Many other members of the expedition, and this includes government officials from the Congo, saw it and heard it. There's an article from the Boston newspaper about a group getting ready to go over and look for the half-god, half-beast, Mokele and Bembe creature. This is in uh, 1999. There have been about 30 expeditions into that swamp looking for this critter right here. Many of those that come back say, man, all the natives over there know about it. It's like you know, it's not a big deal. There have been so many expeditions, uh, 30 some that I know of, plus maybe more. The natives claim that they live in, a, in caves along the side of the rivers, and they're more active at night, very difficult to spot these critters, and they stay underwater. So not only at night, but underwater at night, which makes it even tougher to see. Roy Mackel wrote a book about it. We sell the book. We're finally able to get some from the Netherlands. If you want to get his book, it's like 25 bucks, but uh, about a living dinosaur. Now, Roy Mackel believes in evolution. After going over to the swamp, he came back, he went over there twice, spent a quarter million dollars. He came back and said, folks, there are some dinosaurs still alive. And then he said, it's amazing they survived for 70 million years. <laughs> oh, well, we're working on Roy about that one. Uh, it's not millions of years ago. William Gibbons from Canada has been over there four times now. He and I wrote this book together, Claws, Jaws, and Dinosaurs. William contacted me and said, Behoven, I've been there four times. I said, William, I've been collecting stuff for 30 years on cryptozoology. Let's write a little book together. So he did for kind of junior high, lower high school age, about dinosaurs still alive. 